I mentioned earlier that we have a massive drought across the country. The drought is now affecting 88% of the corn crop, which, of course, as you know, is in like 98% of processed foods on your uh, supermarket shelves. It feeds a lot of the factory farmed animals, cows, pigs, chicken. Uh, it's going to drive up the price of food in this country, uh, probably not for a year. In the meantime, because of the heat, you've got farmers um, harvesting their crops early. They are killing more animals to get it to market sooner to reduce their herds. So you're going to see a glut at first. It's going to drive down prices, and then prices are going to shoot up 4 or 5% probably in the next year. The drought in this country is reaching levels uh, not seen in 50, 75 years now. 2012 is the hottest year ever recorded in the United States. Now, to be fair, records were only started back in 1895. And what's happening is uh, highways, nuclear power plants, uh, electrical grids, all are suffering uh, at this point because of the tremendous amount of stress that heat is putting on these systems. You had uh, in Washington, apparently this month, a U.S. Airways regional jet became stuck in asphalt on the tarmac because it had softened so much in the 100-degree-plus uh, temperatures. A subway train in uh, Washington derailed after heat stretched the track so far that it kinked. In East Texas, heat and drought have had a startling effect on the soil under the highways and are, are leading to horrendous cracking, according to the senior research engineer with the Texas Transportation Institute, Texas A&M, in northwest, uh, we, uh, eastern and midwestern states. Unusually high heat is causing highway sections to be, uh, expand beyond their limits, press against each other, and pop up. Bill Gossman, senior vice president and a 38 ve uh, veteran at, the, uh, at PEPCO, the Potomac uh, Electric Power Company, says we've got the storm of the century every year now. So they're talking about um, billions of dollars of expense in burying above-ground uh, electrical lines. Highways are uh, falling apart, like I say. Our electrical uh, system, our entire grid, is being put under pressure because, as Mark Gabriel says, senior vice president of Black & Vetch engineering firm, we build the system for 10% of the time that we need it. Peak usage, and that peak usage is growing and expanding and happen more often. And so you have all of these uh, parts of uh, our infrastructure that are having to adjust to global climate change and warming in particular. And so what is the answer? Well, fortunately, these things are becoming clearer to people at a time when it's coinciding where the United States far from being in a sovereign debt crisis. According to uh, Matt Iglesias and others I've read, frankly, for weeks now, the inflation-adjusted yield on 20-year bonds has been negative. In other words, people, institutions, other countries are paying the United States, not a lot, but a tiny bit, to hold on and borrow their money. Because it is such a safe and sound investment relative to the rest of the world. In fact, only parts of the rest of the world. Apparently, uh, there are many countries that can borrow cheaply. The Brits, Australia, Germany, France, and 
as Iglesias says, for a high unemployment country with low borrowing costs, which describes the United States. In fact, the borrowing costs are less than zero. The sensible idea right now is for the old-fashioned liberal one, public works. Spending on certain types of public works today, accelerated repairs of water and transportation infrastructure, say, or fixing roads, updating our electrical uh, grid, burying power lines, expanding uh, infrastructure to provide internet to other communities, building bridges, building schools, funding schools, investing in education, not necessarily a capital improvement, but it is when you consider that that education and these kids are going to be fueling uh, the country in the future. We should be borrowing money at less than 0% interest rates adju adjusted for inflation and spending it and investing it because we know it's going to pay off dividends in the future. Things like the internet comes to mind. Things like GPS, technology, trains. I mean, everything that we have was an investment that our ancestors made via their government. And any success that we've had, any capacity to do a podcast, any uh, ability to, I don't know, build an empire is done in the context of those investments that were made in the past. And now it is incredibly cheap to do so. We can talk about what the Fed should do or shouldn't do. But this is the number one best way to get people to work in this country, to get the economy going again. And we have the benefit of doing it in a way that could actually be smart for global warming in the future. Invest in clean technologies. Invest in uh, public transportation. And, of course... None of this will happen right now.